Hi again. Uh, shortly, I'll be discussing the different types of buses. Or, yeah, yeah. The different types of buses on on load flow on load flow analysis. Um, so, I want you to take note that this load flow analysis is uh, in load flow analysis, you will be dealing with per unit values for the impedances, the admittances, per unit values for the voltages, for unit values for the currents, uh, per unit values for the power. So all of them are in per unit values. Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, 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 that's it. Yun lang. So we have three categories for the buses you have the slack bus or the swing bus the load bus and the generator bus so let's talk about the slack bus first so if 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 you have let's say this system uh, the slack bus or the the slack bus or the swing bus will actually serve as the reference bus. So that means that that bus mm -hmm, this one. Let's say that this is the reference bus or the swing bus. That means that this bus will serve as the reference or Oh, yeah, yeah, will serve as the reference for the other buses. Let's say this is bus 3 and this is bus 2. And since that is the reference, you want your swing bus to have a value of 1 for the magnitude and angle 0 for the, for the displacement. Such that if I have a bus 2 of 1.05 angle 30 or angle 5 let's say angle 5 that just means that your bus 2 is 105% of the voltage at bus 1 of course uh, you have to refer to the base to the base voltages for you to get the actual value if I have a bus 3 that is equal to 0 0.95 that just means that the bus 3 is 95% of whatever is the voltage at bus 2. Of course, again, you have to refer to the... Uh, what do you call this? You have to refer to the base values to get the, the actual value. Now, the 5 degrees just tells you that this is probably 5 degrees ahead of bus 1 in terms of uh angle angular displacement of the voltage so yeah that's basically the swing bus or the reference bus any bus can be a reference bus but you you want to have a good reference bus so that the values of the other buses will not uh what do you call this will have a good scaling yes because if you have if you if you pick a reference bus that is of very very low voltage then the other buses will look like over voltages of 1.3 1.2 1.15 if you pick a, a voltage bus as reference bus a voltage that with a voltage that is very very high then the other buses will look like under voltages 0 0.8 0 0.95 0 0.9 so that's 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 basically uh swing bus so most of the time we pick a generator node a node with a generator connected to it as a reference bus those with large capacities are just reference bus but yeah since it is just a reference you you may pick any any bus as your reference or swing bus now uh, what i want to emphasize at this point is the difference of your pq and pv bus so i guess it's obvious that for pq 
I have P and Q. Sorry. For PQ, I have P and Q. For PV, I have P and V. So, the difference between the two is that, as I have said before, in load flow, you have... Uh, for for this is for this particular system, we have three equations but six unknowns. You have the voltage and the current. Ah, sorry, you have the voltage and the voltage conjugate uh, as as the unknowns. So uh, you actually have four parameters to look to look into in estimating those values. Of course, you have the power injection. You have P and Q. And then you have the voltage and the voltage conjugate. So now, the, for, for the voltage and the voltage conjugate, you have two, two parameters, the voltage magnitude and the, and the angle. So now, you may look into the P, the Q, the voltage magnitude, and the voltage angle as your, as your number of variables working variables in solving power flow now in power injection let's say this one yeah, in your power flow equations you actually have for 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 working variables here because your y21 y22 y23 are are given to you the, the those are the characteristic of your network that's basically defined by the admittance of your of your lines the admittance of your network so you have the power injection p you have the power injection q you have the voltage uh and it's conjugate so you have v2 and v2 conjugate so to differentiate the two we separate the voltage magnitude and then the voltage uh voltage angle and if you are given a P and Q, therefore, the unknown to you is the V2 and the V2 conjugate as I have shown in the previous video. So what does it mean for a load bus? Most of the time in a power system, what's, let's say for a transmission grid, they want to have a certain power uh, they have a power requirement so for for example a certain load point requires 500 megawatt uh, 500 uh, kilowatts or one 500 kilowatts and 500 kvars so that means i must force the network to produce that 500 kilowatts and that 500 kvars at that point so for a load bus, what's important, you, you, you want to force the power at that network to have that certain P and to have that certain Q. So that's what defines a load bus, like for this example. This is a load bus, bus 3. Because I want to force a certain P and a certain Q going out of that. Because I want to satisfy a certain amount of megawatts and a certain amount of kvars to correct the voltages to supply to my to supply my cos my customers. So that's a load bus. Now, if for a generator bus, you are well for a generator bus, your generator should be working at a certain amount of voltage. So it is quite obvious that you want to preserve the value of the voltage but of course you cannot preserve the value of the voltage magnitude and the voltage angle uh, at the same time so what's because if, if you do that then you won't be able to do preservation of the power because you'll, you'll th that's what happens eh? Uh, you have four variables two of them will be uh, constants two of them will be unknowns so if I choose V 
magnitude and V angle as constants then that makes P unknown and you don't want that because you want a certain P because that P is the one that will be consumed by your by your consumers I guess the only one that has a variable P is this lock bus let's say this is this lock bus since this lock bus has one angle zero, therefore you define the voltage magnitude and the voltage angle. So that makes P and Q variables at this point. But for the other buses, since you only have one slack bus, you have uh, certain you have a certain amount of Q uh, of of P uh, in that bus. So for a generator bus, you have a certain P. You want a certain P and a certain V magnitude. So that makes your V angle and your Q variables. Now, uh, we we don't, uh, well, of course it will matter, but uh, the, the, the under voltage in the buses are actually dependent on the magnitude, not the angle. So it's so for a generator bus, you want to reach a certain V. That's why you make you're making it constant. Right? Uh, a certain V magnitude for you to avoid under voltage or over voltage. So that's what's happening. So again, I have you have three buses. You have a PQ bus where that bus for where on that bus you ha you want to make a constant P and Q. You want to deliver a certain P and Q. You want you have a generator bus wherein on that bus you want to deliver a certain P and have a certain V magnitude and you have a slack bus or a swing bus where on that bus you have one angle zero as reference for the voltage that makes your P and Q unknowns for a slack bus your V magnitude and V angle unknowns for a load bus and your Q and V angle unknowns for a generator bus so yeah i guess that's that's the difference of the uh three categories for the buses then for the methods on solving or estimating your load flow uh we'll be talking about that in another video i guess